We as humans desire to compare things, as our knowledge is often contextual. We rely on pattern recognition to act in unfamiliar scenarios. But what happens when we want to teach a computer to compare things? While humans can subjectively create comparisons pretty well, it's quite difficult to translate this to a perfect mathematical formula. While some comparisons are difficult, some are quite straightforward. Let's take, for example, comparing two pictures of the same size. Each picture can be represented as a grid of pixels where each pixel has a corresponding hexadecimal color value. We can naively compare the color value of a pixel in one image to the same exact pixel in the other image, doing this for all the pixels to find the similarity of the two images. We could further employ more sophisticated techniques to look at difference in contrast, structure, or key features using just the color value of the pixels, as it's a numerical value that can be transformed. But let's say you wanted to compare two things that were a little more complex, like two sentences or two audio clips. Comparing phrases can get a little more complicated, where hidden meanings, connotation, and sentiment provide contextual barriers to raw analysis. This is where it can be useful to have a numerical representation of the data. This is one of the core ideas of NLP, known as Natural Language Processing. The process of converting abstract data such as phrases, audio, or video into a numerical representation is called creating a vector embedding. There are many different models and approaches to this process, as there isn't one way to convert data into numbers. ChatGPT, for example, splits sentences into common sequences of words called tokens. Each token is contextual to the one before it, allowing the model to predict what is likely to come next. When the data is converted to numerical form by one of many algorithms, it's in the form of a multi-dimensional coordinate set. This is more commonly known as a multi-dimensional vector. While our brains are only visually trained to process three dimensions, vector embeddings are coordinates on what can sometimes be 1,000 plus dimensional graphs. This is because each dimension represents some trait or quality of the object, allowing us to compare that dimension or quality across objects. The important part isn't to get lost in trying to wrap your head around what a 1000 dimensional object means, but rather to use techniques that allow us to simplify and mathematically compare it to other objects. The mathematical process of determining how similar these multidimensional objects are involves finding the distance from one point to another in the multidimensional space. This distance metric is the fundamental building block to understanding vector search. There are many approaches to calculating distance metrics, but one thing is the same. The shorter the distance calculated between two embeddings, the higher the similarity. Vector search involves taking a new input, converting it to an embedding using our model, and then comparing it to all existing embeddings in our database. The ultimate power of vector search lies in leveraging these powerful models that can capture context in numerical data, allowing for strong search results that don't rely on keywords or phrase matching, but rather semantic similarity. We can use an application that we built to showcase this more clearly. Rap Genie uses vector search to compare a phrase with rap tracks that have similar lyrics to the input. When we search for scimitar on Rap Genie, it doesn't care about finding lyrics with the word scimitar in it specifically, but rather things similar to scimitars, such as sword, blade, knife, scalpel, or edge. We can now take this example to the next level, leveraging the true power of natural language processing. We built another app called Dryad that scans your GitHub repository, creating embeddings for every file. You can then use Dryad's vector search function to find files with code that implement specific features that you search for. This works because OpenAI's models have been trained on large amounts of code, allowing them to convert small contextual details to numerical information stored in the dimensions of the vector embedding. Both of these applications use Convex's new integrated vector search capabilities, which we just released today. 
fork either of these repositories to try out Convex Vector Search for yourself, or head to our docs to learn how to integrate it into your application.